uh, what's been ha- have you had anything interesting? I know you have out of body experiences on a pretty regular basis, Dario. So have you had anything uh, interesting happen to you that you haven't already told people about in in recent history? Um, not really. I mean, I'm I'm still I still have them all the time, but it's like, like I said, it's more navigating this stuff. I mean, the recent one that um I was trying to uh, explain in the recent workshop that I held, which was the records and stuff, which I went into like the halls of Amente, the cathedrals. Yeah, I watched that video. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah um and um yeah i was going into details around that uh actually last last night i was back into the halls again so oh. I, I meant anyways because i I go there when i'm out of my body i go there quite a lot because like i said before um well I, I actually haven't said it but that was actually the halls of amente was the most recent period within this realm before you know what people call the reset the flood all those things written about in the bible etc so yeah contains a lot of the history there atlantis and all all those things so yeah so it's a permanent record of what what a well it's a it's a rec can you just explain just for people because i we did talk a bit about that because of time restraints we didn't get to go into a lot of detail about everything but what is the halls of amente and just just for people who don't know what that is yeah so the halls of amente is part of the records within this realm first time i went there um like i'll give you the backstory i had no idea what the halls of amente were never even heard the name to be honest with you when i first uh heard about it in the obe well i was told about it when i woke up from it i actually thought it was part of hell or something like that <laughs> you know <laughs> because i had no no idea so the i was introduced to the halls of mente by my uncle bob he passed away about i would maybe five, six years, just give or take around there. Um, and he he actually took me to the Halls of Mente, which you access it through the pyramids, the middle pyramid, right? And when you go down into the, when you access it, it's like a stairway that opens up, right? And you go underneath the pyramid, you get access yeah. to three sections, three halls. The pyramid is actually much larger than what, what, what we see them as. So we're only viewing the pyramids as a, like the top level, like, you know, just above the surface. Yeah. But those like the go way 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 down and that's the hall so originally before like the uh the flood of things the reset you know people call it the atlantis flood the mud flood <clears throat> in the bible they call it the great flood and all, all those things right so the original pyramids are a much larger structure and they're all connected together and the entrance is the very bottom and the entrance when um if you're coming in from the top how i do down the stairs at the very end of the hall, the middle one holds a, an entire mapping system of this realm. So they actually show you the construct, the realm, how everything works. Um, and that's actually part of where people uh, gather around like a table and stuff. But that would be the entrance, the original entrance where you are shown the realm of what you're in. And this is also why the pyramids are actually lined up to uh, stars, like, you know, the star system and stuff like that. They're fixed to mm. certain stars because stars are fixed dimensional spaces, which can be accessed out of the body. So the pyramids were working as fixed dimensional gateways inside the pyramids and also to access dimensional spaces in those fixed fixed dimensional spaces through the stars. That's why they're aligned to them. So it's fascinating. You must look forward to going to sleep sometimes. You could be thinking, oh, what can I learn this time I go and visit? Do you, do you, <laughs> yeah, do you tend to take it for granted now, or is it still really exciting to think about what you might learn? Well well, that's I try I try my best all the time to ask questions i mean sometimes i still get frustrated as well with some of the stuff that i come across too it's like i'm like to myself i'm like well why is it like that you know but um i don't necessarily listen to anything anymore i've already stated that in our last one i believe but Mm -hmm. um i don't i don't listen to anybody because i don't want influence when i'm when i'm getting the information i'm seeing it firsthand Mm -hmm. Uh, also the quran right the quran is in the halls of mente as well and the quran isn't is isn't what uh, i don't even know what the quran is really i'm not gonna even gonna look at it i know it's like a bible thing right but it's mm-hmm. a, it's not that at all the quran is actually a it's like a blueprint manual of awakening the dormant abilities within the physical body that's what i've been showing as well so a lot of the books and things like that have all been distorted here this is why you could still you could still get a lot of true information about things like it's not all gone like there is truth in books, you read books, etc. You do your research, you'll find truth. But it's also riddled with a lot of overlays of distortions and things like that and, and lies, which then lead people down a path. But when you're out of your body, you access all things again, the truth of truth of how things are, because none of it's actually hidden from you 
once you mm. leave your body and access the other side or dimensional spaces, realms, etc. Mm -hmm. So, so when, what you experience is it? Um, are you still kind of? Is it still coloured by your own life experiences? What you're seeing and your um, you know, concepts, things that you already know about that your consciousness is then sort of relating to you with what, with what you're experiencing. You think that still comes into, into it quite a bit or is the essential truth of what you're witnessing and uh, experiencing the same for everybody? Okay, so th th there, is a, there is a core truth to things, right? So when, this is part of the... Um, to, to put people in like these spirals and loops and stuff like that. So when, when we start thinking, have an open mind, be open, like you, you, you fall into the, the, the ideology of not a fixed truth, not a, not, not something that's solid, not something that is a core truth to things. And then you're, you're constantly scattered of looking for possibilities of truth without actually a, one truth so there are things that are fixed there there's core truths to things on the other side and it's not necessarily just one thing that i see for myself it's something that everybody sees for themselves right as well now this is where i've even come up with a lot of my belief systems right because they were belief systems belief yeah i believe something because i'm being deceived already so a lot of the things that i've been showing I've, I've been confronted with that. And to be honest with you, it's taken me like, it's, it's like the, um, it's almost like, um, a friend actually told me this and he, he actually said this in a, a good way. It's almost like, uh, everybody's trying to find what's inside the hidden room. Right. And the, the hidden room is locked down. It has, you know, you can't get in it and everybody's trying to figure out, well, what's in that hidden room. And then somebody figures out how to go inside the hidden room and they see all things for what it, for what's actually in there. And then when they come back and tell people, then everybody's like, no, have an open mind. It could be this, it could be that, you know, but when everybody enters the hidden room, everybody will see the elephant in the room, the things mm. that never change, the truth of all things again. Yeah. So. All right, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that, that does that does help. Yeah, it's um, something I think about often. So we've got a question here from Robert Forsyth. I'll just throw this up. Uh, oh, sorry, that was not the one that I wanted. Uh, question from Invicto Spiritus, I like the name. When you create a realm of your own on the other side, can you manifest people slash entities populated or can you only create inanimate objects? If you can create people, do they have souls? Deep question. What do you when think? You, when you, so re the, read it off to me again. So when you create a realm of your own on the other side, can you manifest people slash entities to populate it or... Can you only create inanimate objects? And if you can create people, do they have souls? So this is where it goes into there's there's two different types of like things that you could create, like two different things, right? One is like one that we're living in now, which is like a open realm for souls to come in and experience. So, you know, and then you have on the other side creating dimensional spaces, your your field creating a realm for yourself to experience whatever it is that you want. And in this case, yeah, you can create aspects of yourself, really. It's not necessarily that they have no soul because it's not all of an aspect of yourself. So if you're creating a realm, let's say to play out something that no other soul wants to play out with you, well, then you will fractalize a part of your soul to play that role. But you're really playing mm -hmm. with yourself. So. Like a petition. Yeah. 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 So this okay. is why you get... Um, dreams right I've, i said this before so when you're dreaming a lot of people are typically accessing just their their field right and within that field is their pleasures their fears etc so this is why you get occurring dreams of a monster chasing you it's typically typically because that person has a lot of fear that's creating that entity which is just an aspect a, a thought form materialized for an experience because they're giving mm -hmm. energy because each soul is the creator so you whatever you put your energy into that's what you're creating, right? So interesting. So just on that, a dream that I used to have a lot, I don't know, not so much anymore, but it was often uh, ending up being squeezed in, some people think, oh, that was you being born, but I'm not so sure. 
trying to get through a tunnel which became increasingly uh, darker and more restrictive to the point where it was suffocating. And it was very, it was I, I, I probably 30, 40 times I had that dream. And it uh, was always frightening and never really got to the bottom of it, but it just seems to be happening less often. Yeah, what, what do you think about that? Now, you've probably had people with similar dreams like that explain those to you. So like, I mean, I don't know because it the, it depends. I mean, it could be it could be many things. It could be you accessing a dimensional space, you being mm. pulled out of accessing realms, and it could just be you accessing your field. This is why <clears throat> it's hard it's hard to navigate certain things, or for me to give clarity to individuals without a, like a lot of context around it. You know what I mean? Because this yeah, because there's a lot of things that you could be accessing that um. That even for myself when i was accessing things like versus dimensional spaces my field realms and stuff all of it was really confusing like for me to like line up what it is that i'm accessing until i just reoccurring okay this is what it feels like etc and and, mm. and and still sometimes when i'm accessing certain things i still get put off in in confusion of what is this really am i, am I viewing someone's thoughts is this a potential time event and it, there's just slight deviations of feelings and sensations that I feel when I'm accessing certain things that I, yeah, they have to tune into. Yeah, interesting. So, um, just talking about astral travel, I, I should point out just for anyone who's tuning in or watching this on the replay, uh, let us know where you are from to say hi in the chat, and uh, I'll give you a shout out. Now, if you do have a question for Darius, so Darius is an expert with all things out of body. I know he doesn't like the term expert, but he's very experienced and um, that uh, exploring other realms, other dimensions. And so, you know, any question you have related to that, feel free to put that into the chat. Just put a cue and then um, put in your question. So we've got one here. Uh, all right. Somebody once would like you to elaborate a little more on what you said about the Quran and the religious books. Uh, I, sh I think you were saying that uh, books like that can can be uh, corrupted or all the information can be uh, changed because of who it's been written by. Did you want to say more? Have you got anything more about that? Can you elaborate? Yeah. So w when I'm talking about the book, so Quran, the Bible, like uh, an ancient texts, a lot of these things are so verbatim of what I've seen when I'm out of my body in terms of the construct, this realm, how it's fixed and movable. Um, I've been showing that it's like uh, realms stacked on God's shelves, you know? So a lot of the things that people read about, I'm just going to say the Bible, because that's like the, you know, we're just going to talk about the book, right? Yeah. Is, is true in a lot of ways, right? And this is why I said a lot of the things that I've come out of my body based off my belief systems, because I'm not religious either to then find out that a lot of the things that have been written about there, I have seen even the water separated from the waters. Um, I remember being in the ocean, seeing the, the oceans have oceans and rivers themselves deep beneath the oceans. So there's, there's a lot of things that are spoken about there, but it's also has a lot of distortions because a lot of the stuff that was written back then was telling a story and also a script of this realm and how things actually work, how it was created. But then with that also came savior complexes, putting people in a place of disempowerment and also worshiping something that they are. Right. So, mm. yeah, that's, okay. that, that's sort of what I mean by, by, by the books and texts and stuff like that. Even a lot of the form of technology is still in there. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of the technology is actually still written about, let's just say the pyramid times. And some of those technologies are still active to this day. I remember being taken to what I know is um, the people call it different things, but I'll just say Atlantis, right? There's still an underground pyramid there that is still active. I remember being taken there by a uh, being that looked almost looked like the Grim Reaper, almost had a hood over himself, but he wasn't. Um, and uh, he, he was showing me that um, one of the portals is still is still active and it's it looks green. So yeah. he was also telling me that's also part of the point in a return, etc. So yeah, yeah. So I've got a question here, which is similar to one that I asked you when you were, uh, when we had our interview. 
Rose is trying to astral travel and has been struggling with fear of vibrations. I've not heard of this before. Uh, do you have any tips for overcoming them? So fear, okay. So one, fear is the number one thing that will hold you back from experiencing anything related to leaving your body. It, it, if fear is just a, it's adrenaline, it's a high emotions that wake up the body. When you want to leave the body, you need to get into a state where in the only thing I could give you is reassurance because I can't really give you anything else besides reassurance that you'll be all right. Because when you shut down the body or let's just say astral travel, because when someone says astral travel, they're typically talking about lucid dreams. And at that point they're it's there, they could become fully conscious and aware in a true out of body state, but they're not fully conscious. It's where you can't really bring back all details, but the, the frequency that you hear, um, I don't know if you're entering sleep paralysis, so maybe you could elaborate on that as well if you have entered sleep paralysis before. But if you could just, all these things that you feel feel that are unknown to you, like uh, you're fearing really the unknown, essentially. So you're, mm. you're feeling these things and you fear it because it's an unusual sensation. You haven't felt it before or you feel a presence in the room, you fear it because you don't know what it is. If you could just get rid of the fear of death, you'll find just past fear, what awaits you is access to all things again. And they won't necessarily present themselves to you, beings or access to things because you're preventing it you're, by staying in that frequency, really. I mean, that's why, that's why they um, think about how much how much they try to put people into fear, people into fear of death, people into fear of getting sick, people into fear of everything, mm. because that's it literally cuts you off from everything. It puts your body, even the awakening, the dormant abilities, let, let's just say natural intuition or, or, or feeling people's energy, telepathic communication, all those things. I mean, you put a person in fear or survival, it automatically cuts off a big portion of their brain. They, they go tunnel vision. They can't actually see the peripheral, things like that. So. Hmm. Yeah. I think it's um, it, it's a, it's even though it's an unusual thing that we're talking about out of body experiences that it's still a natural thing. Like it's a, it's something that humans have always been able to do hmm. for thousands. You know, as far back as history goes, as always, people have written about this. So I tend to look at it that way. It's like you don't need to be afraid of something because it's unusual. It's a very natural process, and it's just a matter of mastering what it is. Uh, if it's something that you want to do mastering the process and and uh yeah it's uh, it's as natural as um eating food or going to sleep or you know all those other things that's the way i look at it yeah you the show uh rose will find that as soon as she just i don't know if you could just get into the state this is probably extreme for people but where you say to yourself okay i'm okay with dying today or whatever like it's like you get to that level of like i just like you're not in fear anymore you things will open up to you right a, a lot of things that that you you have questions to will start to pre present themselves to you so yeah yeah i mean that's an extreme way to view it but <laughs> <laughs> might wait for some uh, yeah. So we've had just a, a couple of people, Jenny, uh, Jason Janice, uh, one of my earlier guests, he always tunes in. G'day, Jason, over there in Waukesha in Wisconsin, I believe. If uh, you're just tuning in, uh, I'm Rod, the host of Untethered Consciousness. So I'm joined today by Darius J. Wright, who has been on our channel before. Darius is uh, very knowledgeable when it comes to anything to do with out of, the out-of-body experience. So he's here to answer any questions that people might have and talk about what he does uh so yeah if you if you've just do it that was <laughs> that was that was for my previous one all right if you uh just join us say hi in the chat let us know where you're from i'll give you a shout out if you have a question for darius just put a cue in front of it and i will relay that up to him so i can filter through all the other co comments so i've got one here for from blue printed balance it's a good name what's your best advice for us while we are here in this reality <laughs> yeah so um focus on yourself religiously essentially so 
um, the more that you focus on yourself doing awakening your gifts or like a lot of people have natural things, natural gifts. Mine just seems seemed to be when I was little sleep paralysis and learning how to leave my body. And that's why I'm teaching others how to do it. But if you could just focus on yourself, focus on the gifts, get rid of fear that, I mean, that's the best thing that you could do because then you could end up sharing it with people accordingly because you, you'll come into a place of mastering it essentially. So, I mean, I don't really like the word master or any of those things because it implies that I'm, you know, hierarchy and stuff like that when we're really all, you know, we, we all have certain gifts and abilities that can be enhanced that you should be doing by focusing on yourself and not focusing on the collective, <laughs> which, which will go against what a lot of people view, which is putting a lot of energy into everything outside of yourself when it should be always within yourself. And then when you've accumulated the knowledge, worked on yourself, any things that you're dealing with, then you could share, like I said, share that accordingly to the collective and it'll help them much better than the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good answer. I'll add to that and say, uh, follow your, follow your interest and follow your excitement. There's like what you were just saying, Darius is there's what society says that we should be doing with ourselves, what your mum and dad say you should be doing, what your brother, your family say you should be doing. And I'm sure you've encountered this a lot in, in your time. And then there's the things that really interest you that really are, uh, you just feel drawn towards. I think the more that you can focus on those things and pursue those things, the more valuable you are to everybody outside of you as a result yeah. of that. Yeah. Uh, so we've got one from, uh, let me see. Well, this is a bit of a mouthful. I'm not even going to try to <laughs> try to pronounce this. Let's just yeah. go with Lepi. Uh, what's your position on in, near death experiences? Would it be fair to say that the near death experiences may be, uh, oh, okay, hang on, let me read it. Would it be fair to say that near death experiences are maybe meeting different entities, just like when we meet different people in real life, or is there more to it? So, uh, so the, um, I'll, I'll answer this based off if yeah. what I feel is um, the question, really. But uh, NDEs and OBEs are one and the same thing. Um, so my position on that, right, and uh, I, I could elaborate on that if, if you feel I should, uh, but um, I'll, just, I'll just say this. When you, when you leave your body through a controlled out-of-body state or you temporarily die to access things, all of the beings, relatives are all there, right? All, all things become available to you again. You begin to see all things. That's time events, thoughts, individual uh, people's thoughts, right? You could actually see it, touch it, taste it, feel it. You get shown the nature of reality, how things really work. Like I said, it's very similar to what's in the Bible, you know, immovable earthly realm. Um, and all these things become available. So it's not necessarily when you have an NDE, you, you're not, you, you see it all. Some people, right? And this goes into what I was talking about originally with the dreams and stuff like that, their field, experiencing their fear temporarily or their pleasures. Some people, when they do cross over through a OBE controlled or near death, you'll find a lot of stories have distortions in it based off the belief system of the soul in that particular time. Because when you have certain fears, you are creating a field. Your soul is creating a field, right? A dimensional space. And when you cross over, you may temporarily experience your greatest fears or your greatest pleasures, right? Temporarily anyways. And then slowly over time, the longer you're there, more information comes within you. And then just like a slap in the face really of here you are <laughs> you know um, yeah but, all right well if, if you want to follow up that uh with anything more than let then yeah just drop it into the chat uh so we've got one here from raised by wolves 222 thanks for tuning in wherever you're from what's up guys with this realm having unchangeable and predetermined events how did it get manipulated by the few how did this extended timeline happen. So the presupposition is that this realm has unchangeable and predetermined events. So I suppose, yeah, you know, yeah, you I, that? yeah, I know, uh, raised by rules, I've did a video with him. But uh, okay, yeah, so so the this this realm does have pre preset markers, like events, 
And this also goes into the cycle of time. This is where people talk about the looping of things, uh, people reincarnation loop, all those things, not necessarily looping the way that people view it, but there are preset cycles, right? And this goes off how there, we live off 12 months when really there's 13 months because it's reflected by as above, so below as, as within, so without everything's reflected also from the creators or the original creators of this realm as well, which goes back to that number 13. Now, when you, when you look at this realm, there are preset event markers that will take place and it's, it's inevitable take place. One of the classic examples of this is each soul here will inevitably wake up to the other side and see all things again, either if that's through an OBE or when you die and you cross over, that's a preset event marker that doesn't matter which path you take in your life you'll always come to that event marker. Mm. And so there are certain uh, cycles of time, event markers through th those cycles that take place here. And it's just, um, that's why also, when you look at the controllers and stuff like that, they also use things like this to, to loop certain events because they understand the cycles of event markers within this realm. This is why you could also calculate certain things uh, uh, through different calculators and stuff like that. And, have things match up very very um like you know they're preset like you're seeing into the future so this is also why you look into the the calendar and stuff like that like uh which was the wrong calendar it was supposed to be based off of 13 but they were also able to predict certain things because back in that time period with the pyramids like i said the halls of immense they had the ability to access time events and also access the true nature of reality which then also gave them access to pre set event markers and also time as well. I don't know if that answers. I hope it does. But. <laughs> it's <laughs> fascinating. Right. I don't know that much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The uh, I think there is another one here. Oh, okay. Sin Victo, thanks for your question. This is um, and thanks for joining us as well. If you're just joining in, say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're from. If you've got a question for Darius, who is a expert with all things out of body experience. If you don't already know him, then just put a cue and put your question in and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll bring them up in serial. Uh, can people slash entities on the other side lie and misrepresent themselves? And is there a way to make them reveal their true selves? My okay, guess is so, it would be hard. Yeah. So, all right. This is, this is stuff that I don't like to get into because then it could put people in fear again. And my whole thing is getting people out of fear. So I don't like to go deep down into talking about things like this, but I'll, I'll bring it up because um, the, the short answer is yes. Um, you can, when you are in, see, I, I held a workshop and I, I'm pretty sure I have it on my YouTube channel as well, where I, where I go into deeply the nature of reality and the realms within this construct. So when you leave your body, if you are within this realm still, so you're very close to the earthly realm, this is why when you're out of your body as well, you could see uh, people doing things in real time, etc. Like if someone's making a coffee, you could see them making a coffee when you're out of your body, they can't see you. Also, there are certain entities within this realm that still play off the same distortions in the extremes, right? So this is where you could also get beings that also present, present themselves to you as something that they're not really, right? But the more that you access higher layers or other realms and access all things outside of it you don't really you don't have these distortions in these extremes because there's there's nothing trying to fool you but here within this construct was created to experience the extreme the duality with that the realms that are within here the dimensional spaces still do have distortion so yeah you could come in contact with some of those beings i i remember seeing um uh, being impersonating my friend before and uh i called it out and then i uh, it almost looked like a um you, know, it, you when you call i won't go into detail but when you call it out they reveal their true nature to you and it's not necessarily all negative doom and gloom type stuff but you know it's it, it's it's there it it's within this realm anyways mm. yeah. so i've got a uh while we're waiting for any more questions um Robert Forsyth, I have to apologize in advance. If you do log back in, I accidentally banned you. I didn't mean to do that. So <laughs> my apologies and it might go into someone else. Um, all right. So I've got a question about um, 
What what misconceptions do people have about uh, astral travel that you generally run into that you might be able to dispel for people today? So when people talk about it's it's not necessarily it's just um well yeah it's it's a misunderstanding right because when when you talk about astral travel and dreams they're they're one and the same thing really this is why I said typically when you're having a dream right I'll just say dream and astral travel when you're in those spaces typically you're only accessing your field so this is accessing your your dimensional spaces your your greatest fears and pleasures this way there's like it could seem very chaotic all the time like one moment you're in the a dream and an astral traveling and a, a, a dark entity is chasing you trying to kill you versus then you're in like paradise on earth you know you get these far ends of the pendulum swing when you're accessing those things now you can also in dreams and astral travel you could access what i'm accessing as well but it won't necessarily come I mean, uh, people that have dreams and astral travel, they could they could attest to what I'm saying. But you you will not come back with the full detail, full memory, as if you're walking here in 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 uh, everyday life. Mm. It's because you're not fully consciously there with an out of body and near death experience, right? They are one and the same thing. The only difference with uh, a near death experience and an out of body is an out of body is a controlled near death essentially right so you're 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 shutting down the body putting it into such a deep sleep to where your soul could exit right so it's a controlled nde without dying right and what you access there when you're doing a controlled state when you are con leaving your body with 100 percent consciousness it's as being 100 percent conscious here what you see you have full detail of, of memory of what you're seeing but also you get access what people typically get stuck in which is the field dimensional you know your personal field dimensional space field that's what people get stuck into with the dream and astral is they're just stuck in that field and they don't know how to navigate outside of it right mm. and then they try to explain the nature of reality and all things based off their emotions typically out of control emotions which i've had as well when i was out of my body many many times uh, one of the big lessons that I've learned is how to control my emotions because when my emotions are out of control, I experience a host of chaotic things. All right. So, yeah. Did, did so I explain that properly? Yeah, yeah I think so. I, I, okay. A follow up to that would be is it because there's emotions and thoughts are very, very much uh, they drive what occurs your reality when you're out of your body much more than what they do you know in physical here. reality yeah so here if you have a thought of something right you could i don't know let's just say if you want to do something in your life you have to walk down the path of the time right and let's just say if you have a thought right now like right now think of like a big scary monster standing standing in front of me right i'm not gonna that's not gonna appear but when you're out of your body dream astral in a OBE, they'll be there like that, right? So mm. your fears are presented to you very quickly and your thought forms materialize there very quickly as well. This is why one, um, you know, um, I don't necessarily do this anymore because um, I, don't, I don't necessarily like to tap into other people's fields and see their thought forms and stuff. But I was doing this just by out of my body all the time. But this is where also when I was out of my body, I was tuning into my friend's thoughts right and i didn't even realize that that's what i was doing until i confirmed <laughs> with him many times that oh i've seen this and he's like oh i was thinking that privately you haven't told anybody but you you could tap into all that as well you see what i mean so like even even people's thought forms that are typically out of control here physically is still creating dimensional spaces when you leave your body that can be accessed this is where it comes mm -hmm. into integrity you have to be you know stand in integrity and just yeah just come from a place of non-judgment when you see certain things, you know, that's, yeah. Okay. That's good. So we've got another one from 10. Thank you for joining us today, 10. Appreciate your question. Is there a benefit to doing it during the day versus night time due to visibility? Ah, okay. Um, I've got an answer for that too, but you go first. <laughs> yeah. I mean, y yes, y yes and no. I mean, it, it depends what you're accessing. So, if you want to access this this realm that we're in now, the earthly realm, right, and see what's taking place in real time here, doing it in the daytime is probably the best bet. 
but it's um i i would advise uh getting a blackout tent you know sen sensory deprivation you you, you want to make sure that it's as black as possible where no light could enter your eyes so that you put yourself into sleep quicker but if you are doing it at nighttime and you're accessing this realm and also dimensional spaces and records and, and things like that it doesn't matter when you do it but um yeah, daytime, mm -hmm. if you're wanting to access certain things here, see certain things taking place here, it would be mm. what I would do. And uh, the the nighttime and the daytime in other realms can be different as well. So the one and only experience I had was, it was the middle of the night when I got out of my body and and everything was very similar, like as far as the house and the, the, the bathroom was a slightly different configuration. Then when I went outside, the street was the same. There was no cars, but it was the middle of the day. That was that was oh, the first yeah, thing. Yeah. I, I mean, it was like broad daylight. You know, there was people walking around, yeah. and but it was uh, that was the the one thing I, that really stuck in my mind because it was I wasn't expecting that. It was it was quite gloomy inside the house, but then once I stepped outside, it was almost like it was maybe the door was like a kind of a different dimension as well. Yeah, yeah to go into broad daylight. different dimensional space access. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I, I would walk out of my bedroom, uh, in the out of body state and I would see like massive, like, uh, what you would say is planets, like, you know what I mean? Like mm. 10 times bigger than the sun, like just right there. <laughs> just, wow. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I've, I've created video, I've created videos on that as well. Like I have a host of like my experiences and stuff that I share that I just, every time that I've had them in the past, just recorded, I think there's like a hundred videos now, just personal wow. stories. Yeah I, yeah, I still haven't started to watch many of them yet, but I'm yeah. keen to. Uh, so we've got a question. Uh, let me see if this is for someone who's been here before. Uh, no, yeah, Rose, it's good. So, uh, do substances like alcohol, weed, anything that can uh, that can, do they interfere with astral projections? Any insights on that? Okay, so not necessarily that they interfere. Um, you all right? You, you could have the most disease ridden body completely unhealthy you could still access the other side you could still mm. take your soul out of the body and access all things this is why people have near-death experiences because the body died so like you know the, the health doesn't matter in terms of leaving but the health matters what what you are taking in uh the health matters in terms of bringing the information back it's no different from each individual person let's just say is a computer right? So the human body is a computer. And each computer, human body has access to the internet, it doesn't matter which computer you're running on, it all has access to the same thing. But if you don't take care of your computer, if you don't update the software, the hardware, things like that, and you just let it break down, you'll still access the internet. But you won't be able to load certain pages, you won't be able to download certain things without the computer crashing. And therefore, your experience of accessing the internet won't really be accessing all forms of it as if somebody is taking care of themselves within the physical body health wise that information is able to properly come within the body and you're able to decode it properly well not not decode it but yeah decoding it if we're still looking at the terms of the body's a computer just to give you a reference point here right so that's where the health matters and when you're taking things this is why i don't take anything when you're taking weed or you're taking um, to, to try to induce this, or you're taking like um, shrooms and stuff like that, like it, any any drug that you're trying to take to induce this, you may induce it, but you'll be viewing the other side through a very distorted lens. It's no different from being drunk behind the wheel. You, you'll still mm. see the road, but the road won't be as clear as someone that's sober. And that's the same thing. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that was, um, I like the analogy a bit being being drunk behind the wheel yeah. uh so let's have a look and see what other questions we've got here so if you do have a question for darius just chuck a queue in front of it we've got a lot of people tuning in which is great uh if you haven't already said hi as and let us know where you're from then just let us know we'll give you a shout out as well so if you're just tuning in or you're watching this on the replay and you've skipped forward uh i'm rod i'm the host of untethered consciousness so we just explore everything about trying to answer that question which is who am i and darius is an expert with uh, out of body experiences it's something that he's been uh, experiencing since he was very young and he teaches people how to achieve the out of body state uh, so i've got a couple of other questions here 
Uh, all right, so, well, this is interesting. A lot of people who visited the other side seem to change their view about Earth, Earth's real shape and appearance. Yeah, I've heard people talk about this too. Uh, I was curious about it. What, what do you have to say about that, Darius? Okay, so uh, uh, it, coming straight, the, the Earth is not a, a spinning ball in space. It's, um, it's, it, it's a fixed, it's, uh, there's, I've shared this in the nature of reality. Mm -hmm. It's fixed. There's a dome above, a firmament, right? The, the, the earthly realm is within a construct. And this construct, when you come out of, when you leave your body and you leave the construct completely, you view it. I'll, I'll actually share my screen if I'm able to do that. Uh, yeah, you should be able to. Yeah, you can drop it into the stream. Um, okay. Let me just, if you don't, because it's, I I've, I've shown this many times. I'm just pulling it up right here. Okay. So it's, yeah. Just give me one sec. Bam. And present, share screen. Okay. Oh, whoops, let me um, actually change this. So oh, it's over here. Let me try that again. I'll just make sure that you are allowed to do that. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. I'll just add it to the stream. Here we go. All right. So what, when I've shared this image many times in a lot of the interviews that I've done to try to tell people what the this construct the earthly realm looks like without going against a lot of belief systems and things that then people just don't really go which would be hard yeah <laughs> yeah so basically we're not we're not spinning the space is not what it's it's a lot of the stuff is is deceptions and lies right when you're out of this construct it pretty much this is the best image it's not verbatim but it's the best one that i could find based off what i've been showing many times how the construct is in the realm is it's a fixed immovable object it is a ball but when you're inside of it right this is where it goes into you are yeah this is a better one actually where you go inside of the construct you access the realms which is like this so we do have a core the core actually projects a map on the moon which shows you the entirety of this realm even the parts that are not actually shown to us through the maps that we have today and this is where you go into this construct here on the left what you see on the image on the left right has many realms within it right so right now we're in realm one and each realm has a multi-dimensional spaces right so sometimes I've even seen, if I go back down to this image, sometimes I've even seen certain realms like puddles on the floor. Um, it's like, uh, you know, if I zoom in there, sort of look like puddles on the floor, still fixed and immovable. It's almost like that's where you, know, you could sort of walk inside of it or enter certain constructs, realms, etc. through what you're seeing here. But I'll stop sharing my screen there. Yeah, that's, that's fascinating. Uh, I'll drop that out. Yeah. All right. Next, next question. Uh, we've got this. Uh, let's see. I've got Deb. Deb, I'll come back to you because <clears throat> I want to get someone new. Uh, Anthony, let's bring up his question. Well, out of body, have you? Ever... <laughs> okay, I pulled this up before I read it completely. It's up to you. Uh, have you ever accidentally seen people you know or don't know engaged in something that you might not want to see? And did you did you watch? <laughs> Thanks for that, Anthony. Uh <laughs> um, Everyone, everyone's asking this question really but he's the only one that's actually been game to say it <laughs> no no uh, yes so i've seen i've seen certain um this is why i said that, like it comes with a like integrity and stuff like that like there's mm. there's been things that i've seen that has been actually thought forms right T typically thought forms and also people doing things that i, that I have, haven't even brought up at all i've I, i've seen very personal things people doing um, that I know that I'm like, uh, I've, I've told people one person close to me and I was just like, this is what has happened. You know, so mm. like, you know, something that someone that I could share stuff with, so it's not all just myself. And, um, I was like, don't, don't bring it up, you know? So this, yeah, you do. 
you, you, you either see thought forms, things that they're thinking that are private or things that are actually taking place in real time. So mm. that's including some shit that people don't want you to see. <laughs> so, yeah. There's, but, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things get blended. It must be, uh, it must've been, is it still difficult to say, okay, well, that's a thought form that belongs to someone else or that's something I created. Is it still difficult for you to differentiate between the two? No, no, no. It's uh, so when you're accessing thoughts, there's a certain feeling that comes with that versus mm. real time. Like you, you just know. So it's almost like a, um, it's almost like a, there's like a, it's hard for me to explain it, but I'll try to explain it in the best way. It's like a mist in the air, but at the same time, it's very hyper real. It's like ultra, like, um, all right. It's like a, it's like a light. So th think about, um, you, you see this in movies. So when you have like a, a light pointing at somebody, when you're viewing something in real time, that light is very clear. It's not mystical or foggy or gloomy, but when you're accessing thoughts, someone's thoughts, that's what it looks like. Like everything, that same light will turn into like a, um, like bokeh almost like crystal, mm. like things are. It's like you're navigating like a through mist at the same time. See what I mean? It's like a very, it's different. That, that, that's the best way that I could explain it really. Yeah. Without. And is it this, is it the same for you? Like you, you find your students experience it the same way or does, does that sort of when it's someone else's thoughts they're tapping into, is it different for different people? Um, I, I haven't actually asked, but I've, I've, uh, when it comes to people that I, that I teach certain things, I, I haven't asked the thought stuff, but mm. everything else has, has been, um, they've shared with me. That's pretty clear. I mean, I've even had a uh, one Derek, um, basically was telling me that everything that I've shared is because he, he finally had one as well. And he said that everything that I said is exactly, exactly what he, what he's seen. Mm. Yeah, um, he was on your channel recently, wasn't he? Um, mm -hmm. I think I watched it. It was really interesting. Yeah. Um, all right, so we got a question oh, no, here. That from... was actually uh, that was actually someone else. So that that's two. So that oh, was okay. um, yeah. So two two separate people, him and then someone else. Uh, yeah, someone privately. Yeah. Cool, uh, Deb. Deb, thanks for your question. I didn't miss it the first time, but I'll I'll go back to your original one. Uh, I have visions, but I'm not asleep. I'm awake with my eyes closed. It's like watching a movie, but most of the time I don't know who these people are. Have you ever heard of people having visions? Well, it, it could be could be a psychic thing. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, psychic. I mean, you you could tap in and see see things w without um, shutting down the body to such an extreme state. Like you know, your your brain will your brain wave will enter theta. At that point, you could still be conscious and awake, but then also see visions of things and access certain dimensional spaces, potential time events and stuff like that. But um, that's that's all it will be. It will be visions and accessing things like that. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not like that's a below. That's just a, that's just a way to do it as well. But if you want to physically be there, you have to shut down the body even further pop out and then those visions and things that you're seeing will be you're actually standing inside of it interacting as if you're physically mm. there so yeah it's a, it's it's another way to access certain things what you're doing mm. yeah. yeah i wouldn't say it was unusual it was um uh, deb if if you watch uh nikki allen who's been on my channel a couple of times so she's a psychic and i think it's she has visions all the time like waking visions and sees things you know either usually just through her th she calls it third eye so i guess that's the the head chakra yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's that's how things always show up for her and and she less often things occur for her when she's asleep yeah. uh so here's an interesting one from christina thanks for joining us today christina appreciate you coming on into the live stream are there land masses outside of the ice wall and have you visited them i don't know what is this ice wall do you know what that is referring to <laughs> yes um this is uh going into a topic that i'm i'm, I'm going to be careful here because i know this is on youtube and stuff like that so yeah but there is there's more there's more uh places within this realm that are this earthly realm anyways 
that is not necessarily accessible to the general public. Mm -hmm. um, so we get the Antarctic Treaty and things like that. Um, yep. But yeah, yeah, there is more. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. this place is much bigger than what's advertised, really. Mm. And there's there's plenty of other. I think there's there's things that are coming out um, that keep revealing more and more information about this. And and I think what I've noticed is that there is some newer channel creators, some newer content creators that are taking a much more professional approach and. It's making the information more accessible to more people, more, more, I guess, yeah. believable, if, if for want of a better word. Um, Sean yeah. Ryan is one that comes to mind, especially when it comes to like ufology and that sort of thing. It's, it's becoming much more mainstream. Yeah. Um, all right. So we've got a question here from uh, Deb. Yes, you do watch Nikki. She's really good. Uh, oh, oh, there's actually two. I really like that one too. Hang on. Let's, let's do this one. Okay. Yeah, I've never, I've never heard you talk about aliens before, Darius. But have you ever met any? Yeah, so I've met uh, the tall, tall greys. Actually, three oh, yeah. different versions of the greys. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I've met the tall ones. Uh, like they look like uh, very, very skinny and super tall. Like uh, their neck is like um, I don't even know. It's like four inches, pretty much. Like you know, like all the wow. way. It's like like very very skinny all the way around it's like they're like noodles almost like how they're standing i've seen those type of grays i've seen also the one of the shorter grays and i've also seen which i they weren't necessarily a gray but they were um they had like the gray skin but they're a humanoid and so it's almost like i think they were a blend between the, the hybrids yeah mm. Yeah, I've because heard another guest talk about them. Yeah, they they had the humanoid body. They came to me naked, uh, standing in my bedroom. But I, I have to say this, right? All of the greys, ETs, and stuff like that that I've come in contact with, none of them were evil. Actually, every single time I've, came, I've come in contact with them or they've shared stuff with me, it was very, very accurate to certain things that were going to take place. And they actually did. Mm. So it's like they never shared anything with me that was uh, deception. Uh, like even, um, yeah, they're sharing with me stuff related to three years now, what was happening in three years, what they were actually trying to do with um, also trying to, yeah, a whole bunch of, uh, I won't necessarily share that here, but yeah, mm. they're sharing pretty accurate stuff with me. Yeah. Um, There's, um, yeah, my impression is the, the greys, those who are having encounters with the greys are, they're benevolent, like they actually have our best interests at, at heart and a lot of things that they do uh, with that in mind. Uh, I've only just recently discovered Dolores Cannon. So if anyone's interested that uh, Dolores Cannon is a, um, uh, a past life regression hypnosis expert. She's only recently passed away. I don't know how long ago that was, but I've only just discovered her. But she interviewed hundreds if not thousands of people who had experiences with uh, extraterrestrials and something she said was that uh, she, whenever she was uh, re regressing someone the actual information about what was actually happening would come from not from the person who she had under hypnosis but from the uh the ets themselves whether it be the greys whoever they were so they kind of like had this separate channel open with her even though she said she didn't channel she was not a channeler that's how she got the information and without exception it was all uh you know benevolent and was all to do with their trying to evolve humankind in a good way and not in a uh, not in a bad way and anytime someone had uh, a, a negative experience it was really because of their own fear and prejudice was sort of imprinting on what what happened and once for a lot of people they transform that experience once they actually see the, be able to see the reality of, reality of it of what it actually yeah. was about yeah it's all fascinating stuff i love it um all right so i've got a, got a bunch of questions there and have a keep up thank you all for tuning in appreciate your uh, support and interest in the topic um <laughs> sherry sherry monday i fly drive their crafts good for you that, that would be something i'd like to do as well um Let's see if we've got one from someone who hasn't. Uh, yeah, Anthony, that was uh, the tall grey human-like beings in your OBs. They sound very much like the engineers in the movie Prometheus. 
Love that movie. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so Prometheus, like the uh, the humanoid, gray looking one. That, that's exactly how they looked. The I would yeah. say the third. Now, I'm, I wasn't sure if they they were grays or not. Um, but um, I've only met that version one time, and that time was uh, when I was uh, in the out of body state. Like this is when I was uh, doing it control because sometimes they happen out of nowhere for me. Sometimes they do them controlled. So this was a controlled one that I was shutting down my body. And I remember coming out and uh, I was uh, I f at that point, if I could recall it off memory, I remember pushing myself forward very aggressively so hard that I actually had to stop myself from hitting the mirror as I came out of my body. And then because there was this magnetic pull back to my body, I actually just I just left the room, went down the driveway and uh, came back into the bedroom. And when I came back into the bedroom, these beings were two of them male and female, both naked, standing right at the edge of my bed, looking at my physical body. And then I opened up the door, right? And they looked at me, my soul body. And then they looked back at my physical body and they looked at me like about two times. And this is this is when uh, telepathic communication became very clear to me because I, I never, I thought it was going to be like words or something. Like they mm. say, hello, how are you? And nothing like that. So that they were sending me like this feeling and this feeling was like, um, I was, it was like um, one feeling they were sending to me and then it just, all the words started to come to me in, in my language that, I, that mm. I could understand it. And they were actually, at that point, they were, they were sharing with me a point of confusion of, of uh, how, how did I shut down the body so dramatically without killing it? Mm. That's, that, that's something that, and I actually created a video on that. That was such a long time ago. Um, and um, yeah, that was that experience. Yeah. Because I, I, I remember shutting down my body so dramatically down. This is why I said it's not necessarily fearful when you know what you're doing and know how to do this properly. But I remember shutting it down so dramatically before the body through a controlled out-of-body state where uh, – the my partner actually walked in the room and thought thought that I was dead because I've lowered my breathing down to such a state where it didn't even look like I was breathing anymore. And uh, I, that time, I started to wear like a uh, a heart monitor just to monitor my heart of how low I could get it through uh, shutting down the body. I yeah. think uh, I remember. I think it was like twenty nine beats a minute. I lowered wow. it down. Yeah. Oh, man, I thought that when I get mine to forty six, I thought that was low. That's incredible. Yeah. 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 It's it's almost like in um stasis, right? <laughs> Suspended animation. Yeah. Uh all right. So we've got a few more questions. Thanks for that one. Um all right, eh? Question about your spirit guide Celeste. Was she what happened to her? Was she just a spirit guide for a particular time in your life with a particular mission? Have you communicated with her after those early days when you were sixteen? Um I've, I've come in contact with Celeste two more times since then. Um, those experiences I won't necessarily share here. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so C Celeste is someone that I've, when I first had it at 16, um, I didn't necessarily know who she was, but she's someone that um, I've known for a very long time, even before I came in here. Um, so yeah, you could call it a spirit guide, but it's more like a very close friend. Mm -hmm. um, and she shared certain things with me related to the black space. She took me to the black space again. The and then another being was taking me there as well. But like there are certain things prior to present date that I've been in contact with her. And mm -hmm. yeah. So cool. Yeah. So Rose has got a question. What does it feel like to astral project? I know when no, the one time the one time I did it, it was very exhilarating. That's what I, and it was like feeling of you know, when you've had a really good sleep for an entire week in a row and everything's just going well and you just feel elated and that's that's what I... It, there wasn't anything, there was no worries, there was no anything. It was just like really in the moment and amazed and fascinated what was going on. It was... Yeah, that's, that's what I remember. What about you? Well, what it feels like to me is that um, anymore it's like um, it's... I'm sort of numb to it, like in terms of like that high mm. emotions. But like, if I go back to when, let's just say the first, I don't know, 20 times that they were happening, it was like, uh, 
just high, high energy of excitement. Like I would sit there just like, you know, like yes, I've done it. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, uh, even actually five, four, four and a half years ago, um, when I was out of my body, I remember being out. This this time, I thought that I was actually that I actually killed my body. To be honest with you, because I was trying. This is when I went through panic because I wasn't able to return back to my physical body. I remember trying to get back in and I couldn't get back in. And then I right. started to calm myself down, and um, I was just like, "Well, it looks like I'm here, and I made it." And I remember just like actually just. Uh, at that point, I went uh, outside. I remember going down. I didn't fully go down to the uh, to the bottom of, or to to the end of the street, but there was actually a tar black portal that started to open up, and uh, I also knew that was a point in a return and stuff like that. But um, and then I realized that um, well, if you wait, um, because you you go through sleep cycles right? If you wait for the body to just start to wake back up again, you just get pulled back in. But um, other than that, like temporary just fears of mine that I've just bypassed because I understand that, you know, you, yeah. Um, it's just exciting. Really? It's fun. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one of the most fun things you can, you can do. Uh, uh, what else? We've got a, a bunch of other, uh, <laughs> Tan, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us here today. Appreciate you taking the time out to join us. Um, all right, so we've got a new question here from a uh, somebody who's just tuned in. Hi, Tech221. Thanks for joining us. Can you give your best advice to achieve astral travel? I know this is a question that you get a lot, Darius. Uh, I've been meditating daily for six months and see white visions and tunnels, but no separation, strong magnetic pulls. So this is going to be because I, I could just read this, but it's going to be harder because I'm not speaking to you to get like back and forth. So maybe write mm -hmm. another another question after when I answer this so you could clarify more than I could or yeah, then I could clarify as well, go deeper on it. But um, me meditation isn't necessarily going to get you in a out of body state. All right. So it comes with a controlled shutdown of the body. And I don't necessarily put a time frame on it because um, uh Nathan, right, was uh, also a shared a success story. Uh, mm -hmm. He was someone that was having sleep paralysis naturally because there's two type of re people here. One that people that have them naturally versus they don't. He was able to leave his body in three weeks versus a couple of friends of mine, like the, I'll just go into one of them. It took him about a year to do it. So the time frame is, is it's, I can't put a time frame on it, but if you shut down the body properly, not through meditation, think about deep, deep sleep, hitting your deepest parts of sleep, being fully conscious and aware, um, you will enter uh, sleep paralysis if done properly. And at that point, if you don't have certain fears and anxieties, et cetera, that I, uh, that I tell people not to have when they enter the state, you'll leave your body. What meditation is, is um, it's, you're, you're not necessarily going deep enough. And there are forms of meditation that do take you there deep enough, but at that point you're you're doing what I'm doing anyways, where you're shutting down the body. You know what I mean? Mm. But the that that's why I said it's hard just based off of this question here without me back and forth with the person that's you know because yep. he could elaborate more. So I'm just giving mm. a broad thing. So yeah. all right, cool. Um, <laughs> cheat girl. She calls it a cheat. I don't know if it's a cheat. I think it's a smart way to do it because when you wake up in sleep paralysis, your uh, your brain cycle. And that's how that's how I and that's how I got there. It was you wake up and if you can just catch it as you're waking up, that worked for me. Uh, and I wasn't. I don't recall that I was in sleep paralysis. Actually, it was just that I'd just woken up. And I think there's a, is it the theta? Have I got that right? Theta state that your brain brain waves are in at that point. That seems to be most conducive to being able to. Uh, achieve an out-of-body state yeah so it's um de delta is what i aim for i have to be conscious of. oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah so yep. um yeah i mean you you could uh trick your body in sleep paralysis uh, many ways by disrupting your sleep cycles and going to sleep randomly uh mm -hmm. sleep deprive yourself for you know and then just trick trick yourself and then like you know you'll end up 
going to sleep very quickly, stay consciously aware, you're into sleep paralysis very quickly then, or versus if you wake up in sleep paralysis naturally, you just wake up in it and certain things that you do and then you leave. But yeah. Mm. yeah. So uh, we're going to run out of time for the, all the questions that are coming through here. There's a yeah. good one here from Rose. Uh, what do you think about black holes? Uh, if you ever encountered a black hole in your travels and what's the most interesting thing that you know about them? I've had other guests who have encountered these. Yeah, so black. I've. I, I don't think the black holes in the, the way that you um, um, are asking me in terms of like you know the black holes and NASA and stuff like that. But I have seen black portals, which would be black holes, and th that's exactly what they are. They're mm -hmm. they're access points. Some of them are access points to dimensional spaces, realms, etc. Some some of them are also the point of no return, which I've been shared with many times. And they mm. typically appear appear black. It's like a black tarry. Yeah. Yeah. Tarry. But, so I've got a question here from Bat, but you might need to elaborate a little bit more on this unless you know what he, what he's talking about. Darius, what's the relationship between magnetic force and soul? Why does it hold the soul? Are you talking about the magnetic force of the body? Uh, the, I, I, I think I know what he's saying. So the okay. magnetic, because I've brought this up uh, in, in my videos. So mm -hmm. the, w when you're awake, right, and uh, you, your magnetic field of the body is very strong. That's what glues your soul in, right? So when you shut down the body, let, let's just say death, right? So when you die, the magnetic field of your body is like it's no longer present. So that's why you just effortlessly just exit, right? Mm -hmm. So when you are going into deep sleep, very deep sleep, delta, putting the brain wave into delta, you're shutting down the body to a degree. I mean, you're doing it every single night when you enter sleep. That's why you have dreams and you access your dimensional spaces, etc. But if you do it controlled, right, and you're aware of what you're doing, you'll feel, like I said, that sleep paralysis and the exiting process. So when you're waking, like it's, I, I haven't found a way to do it. Um, but the magnetic field of the body is so strong that it's near impossible to take the soul out. You have to shut it down, shut down the body, deep sleep, which mm -hmm. then lowers the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay. Uh, Anthony had all right, accidental OBE, <laughs> speeding through a tunnel. Oh, I guess oh, uh, massive data download, exhilarating. I guess they're talking about a um, metaphorical tunnel voice behind me said if I go through the light I can't come back was I leaving realm how did soul know where to go this sounds more like a, almost like an NDE yeah yeah so that's the that's the point of no return that, I, that I've been talking about brought up many times on this so mm -hmm. there there is a point of no return with OBEs and NDEs because like I said before OBEs and NDEs are one and the same thing it's just an OBE is controlled near death so mm -hmm. I've been presented with the point of no return many times and typically other people when they have out of bodies and I and I say this not to put you in fear, but there is, right? Just like, as he stated, y y you are asked, right? And uh, typically when you're asked that, if you say yes, I was asked that at six, uh, 16 with Celeste. If you say yes, then the, the body will die, right? But mm -hmm. you will completely exit. And yeah, there is a point of no return here, um, but it's not, you're not tricked, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So Dean Story, another newcomer. Thank you, Dean, for joining us on the live stream. How much time you got, Darius? How are you going for? Oh, good. I've probably got about another yeah, 10, 15. Uh, have you ever come across what people call light beings? Sorry, this is my first time here. Uh, good question. Light beings. I, I guess they are beings that are like are very shiny and light and bright. I, I, haven't, I haven't necessarily seen light beings. Um, I've seen what you would say angels right with wings and stuff like that but when i'm out of my body the maybe they would appear as light to us physically when we look look at them but when you when you're out of your body you're accessing the same frequency that the beings are there so they they appear solid to you uh, just as real as here but without all the distortions decay etc so yeah, I mean, there, there there is a glow, like there's a lightness, but it's not just like pure. I haven't seen just a pure light being. I've seen Celeste was, um, she was a mix of colors, but it wasn't like um, what I think uh, 
he's asking me, which is just pure white light. I, I, haven't, mm. I haven't seen that. So what do you see when you look at your uh, astral body? So not your physical body. Do you, does it, is it look very similar or is there some sort of light that permeates it or does, does it vary? So I've, uh, when I first come out, I look uh, exactly the same as my physical body. Um, there's only been one, one, actually no, two occasions where I've, where I've come out of my body and I was uh, black, uh, like uh, almost like the void black. Like my mm -hmm. whole, um, but typically I'm, I look exactly like the physical body and then, um, yeah. So. Interesting. Uh, so we've got catching up with some of the questions here. Uh, Robert. All right. We'll indulge you. I'll indulge in this one. I have pondered aliens as where they come from. Me too. Are they just time travelers? I think some of them are, or are they from other planets? I think some of them are too. Time travel to the past would be, would be dangerous. Yes, yeah, so a lot of the aliens are still within this realm. They're also the 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 they um you access those spaces through the land masses that aren't aren't shown to us on the maps that that we physically anyways. Um when you take the soul out, the aliens and stuff like that, it's just you're accessing another dimensional space and they're all there all there as well. Um time traveling, you, you can't it's Yes, because you could access potential time events there, but uh, it's um, yeah, it's not it's not necessarily not time travel isn't really the way it is related to this realm because I mean yes all things are happening all at once that's how it's been presented to me, but I uh, it's like, like I stated before, there are certain event markers within this realm that are preset and pretty much inevitable to take place. So it's not like they could travel back in time and change something to not happen when there's certain preset markers for this particular realm. I mean, th this goes to pretty deep, but probably hold a workshop on it to go deeper into it, to give people more context. Yeah. 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 And I think, think about, um, from the little reading that I've done with Dolores Cannon and the messages she's gotten it, think about a benevolent race there. It's a bit, it's kind of like Star Trek, you know, there's, there's the, yeah. the number one ethos is do no harm. So they're not interested in doing anything. Even if they have the ability to sort of move into different time spaces, it wouldn't be, you imagine a race that's like th thousands or hundreds of thousands of years ahead of us. They understand the ramifications of, even if they could of changing things and it would make sense that they, there wouldn't be something, it would be totally against the rules of, yeah. of what they can, I mean, can't do. Yeah. I mean, you, you can, uh, I'll just, I'll just elaborate on it just a little bit. Right. Um, because what, when you're accessing time, let, let's say for instance, the, the, the parts that I've accessed of, uh, it just through the out of body stuff, seeing things that were going to take place that did take place in my immediate circle. Um, I could have changed that that scenario. So you could say, oh, yeah, I could disrupt time events. Yes, I can. Small things, right? And the, the, the same things with beings that access time. They could they could disrupt small things. But I'm talking about the, there's, certain, there's certain things within this realm that are preset due to cycles that cannot be changed, even if you access um, past, present, and future at the same time. Mm. Because it's, yeah. So that, that, that's why I said it goes into... It's something that I would need to put a presentation on to really have people understand what I'm talking about. But yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, I've I've got time for a few more here. So uh, I've done that one, done that one. Uh, all right, so it's, let oh, me hold on. It's almost oh, sorry, like go yeah. Go, I'm gonna go back to. It's almost like this. It's almost like when. So there are realm events. Like, let's just say con there's two different forms, two different forms of contracts. There's the realm event, the realm, earthly realm that we're in has certain contracts and event markers that will take place and no soul could override that. It's just set, you know, th that is set in stone. But then you also have soul contracts, right? Which are the smaller versions of contracts that can be mm -hmm. changed just with a thought and you could change it, dissolve it, move on, etc but you cannot change the major event 
contracts that are preset. The same thing when it comes to time. When you access time, you could change small, minor things, right? Or, or, or disrupt it, right? Because I could see a potential thing in my circle, disrupt it, make sure it doesn't take place how, I, how I've seen it. I could disrupt those things. And same thing with entities could disrupt minor things, but not fix realm events that are, that are set. Does that make more sense? Mm. It does to me. And I think okay. some things we, when you talk about, um, there's possible events and then there's the, pop, the probability of those occurring. And if we just look at statistics, probability that the, the higher the probability of something occurring, the more likely it is that will, that possible event will occur. And so there are some things like at the human race level that <clears throat> are possibilities that will probably occur because there are so many people heading in that same direction and one person is not going to make any sort of a difference. Whereas if you're, if, if it's just your own possible future and things that are going on and there is a very loose probability associated with them, then it makes sense to me that you might be able to influence that in some way yeah. if, you, if yeah. you had an inkling yeah. of it. Because, uh, the, the, because they, they have used, um, the cycle of time to also, like I said, loop, it, like, like loop of the realm event yeah event markers the un mm. unchangeable event markers so they have looped the unchangeable event markers they have done that but you, you know what i mean but it's you can't mm -hmm. change certain yeah that's why i said it's i don't want to go too too much deeper on this because <laughs> yeah all right well that's actually this leads into a question i've got i've got five minutes so if, if you have any questions drop them in i'll do the best that i can to pick them all up uh we've got one here from uh sherry actually good question how do we know if we need darius's classes i i probably asked that question too yeah i mean you you just um it's it's not necessarily all right the the only reason why i decided to share this right because a lot of these experiences i i didn't start sharing until just about a year ago really um publicly and it wasn't until i was told by my uncle bob about the great work which is waking people up to the other side right and now first and foremost i could care less if anybody joins my stuff right because i'm still walking my path focusing on myself i'm accessing the things for myself and i share it accordingly people want to follow what i share good for you if not then continue on your path right but when my uncle Bob told me that, that's when I started to share a lot more things in particular, how to, well, what's a way to wake people up from the, wake people up to the other side? Well, teaching them how to leave their body and access the other side. I think that's the most effective way to do it. So that's why I started teaching out of body stuff and, in, in, um, teaching people because once you wake up to the other side, you wake up to everything because you're no longer deceived by lies. I mean, you, you, you could, you could view things physically here and you could have intuition and intuition is telling you the truth, right? That that's the instinct. That's the tuning fork. You tune into that. Mm -hmm. It'll never lead you wrong. But, um, so, some people are so mm -hmm. blind that they don't, they, they don't even feel that anymore. And so, you know, uh, it's, it's a very direct way to see things for what they really are. So, I mean, I'm not selling you on my method or workshops or stuff like that, but that's just what I'm you know, do what you want, really. Yeah. I think I think that's what makes uh, people actually join your work even more, Darius, the fact that you don't really, really care. And you've got loads of really great information that's really available as, as well. Yeah. Um, all right, so last two questions. One here from Lepi, uh, here, here we go. And the other side, can we, can we communicate with Source and can we ask it fundamental questions? Well, there's a few couple of questions in there, actually. Let's how about we tackle the first one. Okay, so ca can we communicate with source? Yes. So when you're you're communicating with the source of things, which is the best way to view it, all right? Because I know AI is a big bad thing right now, but source is like a it's it's not AI, but it's like think about it as like AI. It's like a mainframe of like a collection of mm. it's like the records, right? So it, and you access that through the the void, the black space, and it's almost like when you when you have a question right before you it's like as soon as you ask the question it's like immediately the information or you're you're presented with the answer whether if you're showing it 
or transport it to a certain part of the records to be shown certain things that you're asking. So yes to that. Um, and then the other one is, uh, what's the other question? There? Uh, do entities die? I'm not sure what that's referring to, but I'm sure you do. And if yes, where do they go after death? Um, so physically, yes. So the physical body dies, but your soul, the, the soul within the body, when you take the soul out through an out of body state and your death, this, that never dies. You, you, you never, the consciousness never dies. If, um, believing that your soul dies and I'm, I'm not sure, right? So I'm not saying this is what you're asking, but I'm just, if you are, um, if you believe that the soul dies, then you believe that the universe dictates consciousness. And therefore, if the universe dictates consciousness, then you believe that there's an end to you. There's no such thing as eternity, etc. But your soul consciousness is the dictator of the universe. This is why you create through your thought forms, you create dimensional spaces through your field, you access things. We're, we're the creators. Each soul is the creator of all things. So mm. and that never mm. dies. Yeah, I think consciousness is fundamental. And then everything, everything stems from there. That's the, mm. that's the magic part. That's the part that was there to begin with. Nobody knows how consciousness became, but it was there. And then everything else, everything else comes from there. That's the only way I can wrap my head around it. Uh, all right. So that's, that's it. Look, guys, I really appreciate everyone joining in today. I'm sorry, we, we don't, I've actually got another uh, me, I was, uh, I'm going to have to like stretch these out a little bit, especially if we're going to have Darius come on, because he always ends up being really popular. Um, but if you have other questions, then uh, can you let people know how they can, obviously, you can attach questions to these comments, and I'm sure Darius will come back and answer what he can. Uh, is there another good way for people to get in contact with you, Darius? Um, it's just everything. I mean, you can send me an email. Um... But then everything else that I share is on my site, darishjwright.com, which is where you can send me an email. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm not, even though I'm on YouTube and social media to share information, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person that posts something and then I just don't, I, I don't interact very much just okay. because I don't like to get sucked into social media, right? I mm -hmm. find it as a big distraction from my work and what I do, tuning into certain things and, um, and I don't like people pulling my strings. So, so yeah. Um, if you want to get in contact, the best way to do it is through an email, to be honest with you mm -hmm. and, um, become a part of the community that I, that I, that I have on the site as well. Yeah. Cool. All right. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Thank you, Sherry. There's uh, so many people that came in today. I appreciate you all tuning in. Uh, if you are just joining in, <clears throat> this will be available on replay on, uh, YouTube and on, I think it's on Facebook as well. And, uh, yeah, if we couldn't get to your question, then, um, yeah, jump on Darius's website and, um, you can get in contact him with it there. Or Anything just, I recommend, before you finish up? yeah, I, I recommend people as well. Like, uh, there's, uh, other interviews and things like that on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Like people could watch that as well. You know what I mean? Um, so there's that yeah. as well. Yeah. And uh, it's for anyone who doesn't already know, Darius it was previously on this channel. There's another interview with him as well, which has got a lot of other additional information that we covered on that day too, which you might want to check out. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you all for joining in, especially for those who uh, stayed up late to join us here today. Uh, I'm going to end the broadcast now and I'll talk to you guys all next week. S stay there, Darius. I'll grab you.